Hi, Frank Blankowski here. Uh, welcome to Teaching Literature in the ESL Classroom, Part 2. Uh, I'm a course creator at EnglishSchoolCourses.com and also an English language professor at CIGEP uh, de Saint Laurent in Montreal. And on today's agenda, I want to, to talk about, uh, review what I did in the previous episode, uh, give you specific authors, uh, British, uh, U.S., British, Irish, and Canadian that I use in my teaching, uh, refer to two plays that I have the opportunity to see in the fall term with my students, and uh, draw your attention to my writing course called Introduction to Academic Writing. Okay, so in the previous lecture, I talked about uh, the four literary genres I teach, uh, short stories, poems, uh, song lyrics, the novel, and a play, and also the four uh, literatures, the national literatures that I call upon, which is uh, American, British, Irish, and Canadian. I also presented 10 questions, They're pretty useful questions, I think, for choosing literature, and referred to four iconic authors, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, um, Oscar Wilde, uh, George Orwell, and uh, Leonard Cohen. Uh, today I want to show you a few of the famous and not so famous American writers that I use in my classroom and uh, you're probably familiar with most of them but maybe not so much with uh, the man here highlighted Ambrose Bierce. He is a wacky uh, great writer and I enjoy teaching his occurrence at Alfs Creek because he, he wrote it to, uh, from his experience uh, in, the, in the American Civil War, so it has tremendous historical significance as well as a vivid, dramatic, uh, descriptive style. And uh, <clears throat> just draw your attention to the fact that uh, I choose the short stories and the play that uh, I teach in class, whereas the students get to choose the poetry and the novel that they'd like to uh, analyze. Here's a, a freebie. Uh, it's called uh, American Literature, and it's a 179-page uh, PDF document that uh, outlines a great American literature right from the colonial period at the end of the 18th century up until the end of the 20th century. So you can click on the uh, PDF uh, link uh, in the slide. Here we have a, a great variety of British and Irish writers. And I've highlighted Arskell Wilde, who uh, I enjoy teaching, and the students are drawn to him because of his uh, dramatic, uh, tragic life. And um, did you know, looking at the at the visual here, that uh, that the Great Britain, the United Kingdom, and the British Isles don't mean the same thing? I didn't know that until I saw this uh, graphic. So you learn something every day. <laughs> here now uh, is another freebie. It's called An Outline of English Literature, and it's uh, an older document, but it's, it explores. It's uh, You have all the great English uh, writers in one place. You can refer to that and check on the uh, link to scrib.com. Some great Canadian writers uh, here. Did you know that, for example, under novel... Oh, I should have put that under... Uh, no, I did. Uh, Alice Munro is actually a short story writer, and she won the Nobel Prize, and the novelist, that's true, uh, she won the Nobel Prize in Literature 2013. And I've highlighted here Mark Leverado, because he's a uh, Western Canadian poet who lives in Montreal, and I've had the pleasure of inviting him to class several times to talk to students and teachers about his own poetry, which is pretty fantastic. Take the students each term to see a play, and this term, it's we have the choice between the 39 steps based on Alfred Hitchcock's dramatic uh, spy thriller, his, uh, and we also have the uh, Hockey Sweater, a short story by Rock Carrier, that's a classic story. So which play would you take your students to see? You can click on the link for more information. And finally, I draw your attention to my course, Introduction to Academic Writing, and the initial section on how to write a literary analysis. Next episode has to do with how to use film to teach literature in the second language classroom. See you then. Bye.